In this video, we're going to talk about selective permeability. So here we have a membrane, and the membrane's job, or one of its jobs, is to basically regulate what gets into and out of the cell. So it keeps the inside of the cell distinct from the outside of the cell by regulating what passes through. Now, a couple of key things to remember. So here we have the fatty acid tails, and those fatty acid tails, remember, are nonpolar. So the inside of this phospholipid bilayer is hydrophobic. And that's going to influence what things it repels and prevents from getting in, what things it allows in. Right? So the first things we have that can get through easily are nonpolar things. So the things that can get through easiest are nonpolar. And the reason for that is if these nonpolar, and for example, we have several gases here, um, they can get through pretty simply because they, when they hit this membrane, they're nonpolar, they're not repelled by this central part of the phospholipid bilayer, and they make it right on through. All right? Now, within this, we have things that are small and large. So even a large nonpolar thing is going to be able to make it through relatively easy if it's completely nonpolar. All right, so that might be some things like fats or some steroid hormones. Um, anything that's nonpolar with a little bit of size is still going to make it through fairly easily, but the smaller things get through better. So within nonpolar, now the smaller nonpolar gets through faster than the larger nonpolar. Then we start to have the things that when they hit the membrane, they're a little bit repelled, and so they only can make it through if they have a large amount of energy. So we call that moderate permeability. It might take it a while, but slowly a lot of these things would come through. So these are the things that have are polar, but don't have a charge. All right. So we're talking about things like water, perhaps things like some ethanol or small polar molecules can get through, but relatively slowly. And then if you have a large polar molecule, like a glucose, it really has a hard time getting through because not only is it polar, but it also has quite a bit of size. And then last of all, anything with a charge is a pretty much immediately repelled right away because a charge, remember, is almost just like superpolar. It doesn't just have a dipole, it has a full-on charge, whether it's a cation with a positive charge or an anion with a negative charge. So even if it's small, if it has a charge, it really doesn't make it through at all. That's like these ions. And that's one of the reasons ions need channels to help them get through, because they're not going to make it through the hydrophobic membrane on their own. And then when you have large things with charge, for example, amino acids or DNA, RNA, any of those things, they pretty much definitely don't get through, because now not only do they have a lot of charge, they're also very large. So the, three, the two things that really determine if things get through fast or very slow are the polarity. So nonpolar is the fastest, followed by polar, followed by anything with charge. And then size also makes a difference. Small will get through faster than large. But the polarity is more important than the size. So a small nonpolar will get through easiest, followed by a large nonpolar. Then we get to the small polar, followed by a large polar. Then we get to the small charge, followed by a large charge.